So we're back again in our virtual demo room here in Shista. For the ones of you who saw the previous session, if you watched them in the schedule that we provided for you, you saw that we were really explaining the BVM as the Bosch Video Management System in detail. Today, we're going to show you the embedded version, the standalone version of BVM is in a box, or the DIP all in ones, as we call them. These boxes are actually containing everything you have in BVMS. It's just limited by some licensing. So it's a full blown BVM, BVMS solution. It's the same components, it's the same software as you have in the biggest installation out there as you also have in this small embedded solution. So please remember what you saw in that presentation earlier about BVMS and also a few of the other ones that contains some of the information I will get back to today as a small repetition. But let's start with the recording devices we have within Bosch. Yes, we covered previously the, the general session, and now we will be talking about the DVR IP all-in-one, the 5000 and the 7000. It's pretty much the same unit when it comes to the software. The difference is the licensing and the hardware, and I will mention that one separately really soon. I hope you remember this one. We are using iSCSI recording in the BVMS solution. That means that we also have it in the DVR IP all in once. This uh, TCP based uh, iSCSI recording is really nice use case for us who are making professional surveillance, who is making professional equipment for professional solutions. What it does is it's handle really the short network interruptions. A few seconds will be covered by this iSCSI based TCP recording. So it's a really good solution to have for a surveillance system. It, you don't need any special server, you don't need any special hardware, it's all embedded in the camera. So the camera is writing its data directly to the iSCSI targets we have on the computers. You can also use a completely standalone solution for that one if you would like. But we are using this in the DV, DVR IP all in once, both the 5000 and the 7000. What we also do is that we're using the video recording manager that I was uh, explaining in a previous webinar. And I will start this video again because I think it's worth mentioning and repeating a bit. What you see on top is the standard type of NVR recording solution. We're not using that today in the DVR IPs. Instead, we're using the video recording manager. This solution is really giving you the benefit when it comes to how to build a professional storage solution. It's also one of the components that are used by some of the third party integrators out there in the market. For example, Genetech can make use out of a Bosch video recording manager solution. And that is embedded in the DVR IPs, in the all-in-ones. So it's a really good thing to remember and know about because it's a part of the complete scenario and it could be as a building block if you're making a big solution. That was the VRM. So what has happened now on the market when it comes to the DVR IPs? Previously, we had the 5000 and 3000, they are end of life today, and has become now the DVR IP all-in-one 5000. At the same time, the 6000 and 7000 units has become end of life, and we now have the DVR IP all-in-one 7000. So we have merged these units into the all-in-ones. And what do we mean by all-in-one? Yes, these units can be run in three different modes. When they come to you from the factory, from a warehouse, it's a BVM solution. Fully blown, everything is installed. What you can do, you can actually stop the video recording manager solution and just use it as an iSCSI target. So you can make a choice. Use it as only an iSCSI target, Use it as only VRM, the video recording manager, with iSCSI targets, or use it as the fully blown BVM solution. It's up to you. And it's also, therefore, we call them the all in one. No more different part numbers for an iSCSI unit, VRM unit, BVMS unit. Same part number, you just make the choice of what you would like to use. That is why we call them the all in ones. All in one is also containing a lot of things. <laughs> it has the pre installed BBMS, 
it has to pre-installed VRM. Nowadays, you can use third-party hard drives. You can also use third-party cameras. Using the OnWave Profile S cameras, as you saw in the VVM's presentation, it's really simple to add them into the solution. Of course, with the DIPS all-in-ones, you can use the full extent of the metadata you record. Both do the alarming and do the forensic search. This gives you a lower cost when it comes to the total cost of ownership. It's really simple to install. Jimmy will demonstrate really soon here how it looks like with the wizard, how to do this. For the fully blown configuration, you can do whatever you would like, but this is a really simple way of getting your unit up and running in a few minutes. You can also add intrusion and access, as you saw in the BVMS part, and the dynamic transcoding, fully unique solution that I will try to demonstrate in a short while. So Jimmy will not do all the demonstration today. He will help me a little bit, but I will try to do the dynamic transcoding demonstration. Wizard. To make stuff easy, we're using the wizard for the configuration of the DVRIP all-in-ones to have it up and running in a very short while. And this is what Jimmy is going to demonstrate now. So Jimmy, enough talking, enough PowerPoint. Now it's time for you to do some demonstration how to set up a DVRIP all-in-one. Thank you, Andesh. And now we will see the new Devar IP all-in-one. So now we are on the first step. And here you can see that the devices should have a static IP address or a fixed IP address in the DHCP server. We will go to the next, and then we get to the Systems tab. Here you select a computer name for your server, an IP address range for your server, and the time settings with a time server. And then we go to next. In this step, you will see the last saved configurations. Since this is a new device, we don't have any configuration. We can do an import of configuration if we have configuration since before. We can also do port ma mapping if we're going to use this on the internet with a secure uh, SSH tunnel. And then we press next. The device has now scanned the network and we select the devices which we are going to add in the system. I'm just going to add four devices. Here you can also set the IP address you want the decoders, the encoders to have. You select a start, starting IP address and it will automatically add the IP addresses of all the encoders. And I press next. And here I need to set a password for every camera. And then I press initial passwords. I can also set a global password to all the services and all the users on all the cameras to be the same password. And then I press next. Here I can name the cameras. I can change the recording profiles. I can change to a bitrate optimized if I want a lower bitrate, or I can select image optimized if I want a better image. In this case, I will just name the cameras one, two, four. And keep the balance standard profile. And I can also preview the camera image on the cameras and then press next. Here I can set the recording profile. We are going to use continuous recording, but you can also uh, use motion alarm and alarm recordings. I can set the number of days for maximum storage. I will use 30 days of maximum storage in this case. And then I can press next. 
The device finds its own storage, which are already in the Devar IP all in one. I can also, if I have another storage available, I can add it just to just use as well. And then I press next and I find the users tab. Here I need to add a password for the administrator and press apply. I can also create a new operator user. Press on the plus sign, name the operator. I can also use a name and a description and press OK. Here I can also set the password which will be used for the first login and then the operator will select its own password. And press apply. And now I can go to the next. And now we are on the last step. Here I can see what will be activated in the configuration. We have one VRM server, one IceGas storage device, four encoder with four camera channels, two user groups with two user accounts. Now I can save and the configuration is activated. After the configuration is activated, I can also back up the configuration. So now I can save a copy of my backup and store on a USB drive or local on the system or wherever I want to store it. You can also use the configuration uh, li license wizard from here to activate the licenses. And now I press finish configuration and the configuration is done. And now back to Andesh. Thank you, Jimmy. That was the part that covered the configuration part, the wizard, really simple to use. Uh, I would also like to demonstrate before we move on into the product, how it looks like in the, for, for the operator, for the guy who is um, using the system. So I would like once again, Jimmy, to take control and to start the demonstration about the operator part, the operator client running on the Diva IP all in once. Yes, and now we're going to see the operator client. So I'm pressing the operator client to start the software. Here you will need to add your username and your password and press connect. And this is the view of the operator client the first time you log in. You have your cameos where you can add your cameras. You have your logical tree with your cameras. You also have your favorites tree. Now I don't have any favorites. We also have our bookmarks. And we have our PTZ controller down here if we have a PTZ camera. We also have our uh, alarm where we get all the alarms and when we are watching uh, playback we will also have our timeline down here so if we want to check a camera you can just double click it or drag it out and you have live image of the cameras You can hide the information with the panels on the side. And you can also use full screen mode. Now you have the cameras in full screen. You can double click on a camera to get just that one camera in full resolution image. You can of course also use the scroll wheel to zoom in the picture and now we can see that the train is moving and we have a nice image 
I can leave full screen mode and I can create a favorite with this cameras. Now I created a favorite, so I can easily just change the view, double click the favorite, and it's back as I had it before. I can go over to playback. I have my favorite here. I also have my local free, so I can add one or more cameras and see the recordings. I can select on the timeline and press play. I can add more cameras to check on the same time. I can also make a bookmark and add, if I add a bookmark it will store the cameras I'm using and it will also store which time I'm looking. So I can get back the next week just Select the bookmark and it will place me the exact same time I am on right now. Now I can close down everything and select the bookmark and all the cameras are back and I'm on the correct timeline. You can also see your exports if you have done some exports. Uh, you can also do forensic search if you have forensic search and IVA or EVA enabled on the cameras. So we can go back to the live view. Now you can also see the bookmark here and the favorites. And we have the local tree. And this is how operator client looks like when the tip all in one is configured fast through the wizard. And back to Anders. Thank you again, Jimmy. Now we have seen the configuration part, the wizard, and a few things from an oper view, operator view. Uh, I will pre pretty quickly run through these slides because you've seen it in the, in the BVMS side. Uh, Integration with our BNG series and uh, with our AMS solution, it's really nice. It's really good overview for the operator through the client to see both the features from all the different products and also to see the information that is being presented in real time for the operator. So really simple thing to have and really simple to use. Also, it's in the DIP. It's in the DVRIP all in once because it's part of the BVMS. So if you would like to use the access control management system from Bosch, or if you would like to use the BNG series, you can use them with the DVRI Polyan ones as well. I would now like to try to explain something that is a little bit, what shall I say? Yeah, this one, it takes a few more minutes for me to explain for you. It's the technology we call dynamic transcoding. It's a unique feature we have in the DVR IPIS and it's not there in the BVMS part, it's just in the DVR IPS all in once. It's where we are using the solution that is embedded in the units to measure the available bandwidth between the operator's client, the operator's viewing solution, and the DVR IP itself. So I think it's better to try to demonstrate this than talk too much about it, but what we're doing is that we're adjusting the replay of recorded material and also the live feed if you would like to, if you have low bandwidth, low bitrate and bad connections. Because we're continuously measuring the bitrate between the, for in this example, we will use the tablet and the DIV or IP we have out here. So what you do with this software, we call it Video Security Client. It's uh, capable of connecting to all our IP cameras, uh, to watch all the recordings, to do immediate playback, long-time playback. It supports the dynamic transcoding. We can control PTC tech, PTZ cameras. And it's available for iOS, Android, and Windows. It's a really nice solution. And I will just briefly demonstrate how it looks like. Um, in the 
DMRI we have over here. We have a few cameras installed, and I would just pick and choose one here. What I do now is connecting to this camera in the original settings. And I will just turn this one around so you have a bit, bit of a better view. This one is now using what you can see here, dynamic transcoding technology. It looks a bit fuzzy, it looks a bit uh, not perhaps so good. And what I can do here is I can actually adjust and adjust the bitrate that is available for this camera to stream the information in live. You can see it's pretty jerky and it looks pretty bad. It's because I reduced the quality so much. What I also can do is that I can take it to a little bit higher. And if I do like this and I start to zooming into the picture, you can see that the image quality is increasing. And that is because we're just streaming a smaller part of the video. If I zoom out again, you will see that it's slowly going down in quality. You will see some encoding artifacts because it's adjusting to the bitrate between the DIP, the DVR IP all in one, and the tablet. So it's a technology both for live, but it's also for recordings. Right now, I'm in the playback mode, so I have recorded video. What I can do here, I can, for example, go into the dynamic transcoding again. I will reduce the quality. I will start to replay. And what you can see right now, it looks pretty, yeah, it's not that good. It's, I would not be so proud of this one. But as soon as I start zooming in through this one, you will see the same thing happening again. We're increasing the quality as we go. And you can see that the quality of the image is getting better and better. At the same time, if I now are pausing the recording, what you will see in a few seconds, it's, it's actually building up its original quality directly. So it's really nice. It's look crisp and clean. You can see all the details in the setup. You can see it's quite a lot of light in there today. And as soon as I start playing again, quality is getting worse because you have less bitrate to do this. And as soon as you stop it, it will go back again to its original quality. Especially if you start zooming into the video, then you will really see the fully, full quality of the original recordings. So this demonstration using the tablet, using the dynamic transcoding between the DVR IP all in one and this device, I hope it show you some of the benefits you will have if you would like to do remote monitoring from your site and you have limited connectivity and limited bitrate. So that was the part regarding the demonstration of the dynamic transcoding and the video security client that is also part of the deliverance with your DVR IP all in ones. Back to the actual products. Um, we are today using and demonstrating the 5000 all in one. This unit has um, built in pre license for eight channels. It can go up to 42. Um, you can also put in up to four hard drives in there, up to 12 terabytes each, giving you maximum 48 terabytes. And it has the built-in dynamic transcoding technology. If you need bigger systems, you can go with the 7000 only one. It comes in two different versions, two units and three units. This one is up to 96 terabytes. It has some additional redundancy when it comes to the RAID configuration of your hard drives. That is also something that is really nice with these units. You can put them in several different redundant modes when it comes to the RAID configuration. Also pre-licensed for eight channels, going up to 256. If you need more storage, up to 16 drives, you will reach 192 terabytes. You can go with the three units. Still, same unit as the 7002 units, just different hardware. Same technology, same operating system from Windows, and it's using all the components you've seen previously. The ISCAS recording, it's recording the metadata, it's using the fully blown BVMS solution, and this is the big brother in the family. And this is where we really see that we have a nice market position when it comes to building big systems up to 256 channels and up to 192 terabytes. If you need more storage, then just put another DIP all-in-one. Configuring it, 
as a VRM solution, the Video Recording Manager, or just an iSCSI target. It's up to you. That is what we mean by the all-in-one solution. It's one part number, and you can use it as a BVMS, as a Video Recording Manager, or as an iSCSI solution. If you would like to use this nice product, either this one or its smaller brothers, together with, for example, a Genetech solution who can use the VRM, the Video Recording Manager, just do it. It's just to configuring at a VRM unit. I hope this made sense. I really hope that you re also have the information from the BVMS uh, webinar with you, because that will probably also make you see how this one comes together. These units can be used as subsystems or building blocks for a big BVMS system, even an enterprise solution. But it's also the standalone box. You can really go simple. You can start simple. Start using the unit itself as a 5000 all-in-one. The only box you need. Everything is there. Everything is embedded. You have it all. You don't need to bring in a lot of new different types of hardwares. You can start with a box. Eight channels included. Just bring the cameras and you can start your installation. That was the DVRIP all-in-one webinar. Um, next one will probably, if I remember correctly, the DVR network and hybrid. Also, nice solutions, nice boxes that can be used as a building block for the DVRIP all-in-ones. But you probably know that because you have seen the BVMS presentation with it. So with all that, thank you from me and Jimmy. Um, hope to see you soon. Stay safe and see you soon again. Bye from us.